Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. In this video, we break down two of New York City's most important digital infrastructure projects. So let's head over to New York City, where some of the largest transportation infrastructure and digital infrastructure projects in the United States are taking place at some of the busiest rail hubs nationwide. In terms of digital infrastructure, the focus of this video is on distributed antenna systems, which in short form are called DAS. These systems provide coverage and capacity to indoor environments. Distributed antenna systems are deployed in high demand venues such as a stadium, hospital, shopping mall, casino, racetrack, convention center, airport, subway station, and tunnel. Distributed antenna systems service two unique purposes for buildings. Number one are areas with low coverage, such as a subway station. And number two are areas with high density, like a sports stadium. With that background in mind, we will focus in this video on the use of distributed antenna systems in two infrastructure mega projects in New York City. Particularly, we dive into how digital infrastructure, like distributed antenna systems, serve areas with low wireless coverage in key transportation infrastructure hubs, like the subway stations, tunnels, and railway stations of New York City. The key company we highlight in this video is a business named Boingo Wireless, which builds wireless networks such as distributed antenna systems, Wi-Fi, and small cells at large venues like airports, transportation hubs, stadiums, and military bases, amongst others. In particular, Boingo Wireless was selected by the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, known as MTA, of New York, to design, build, operate, and maintain wireless services for two significant public transportation projects in New York City. Namely, number one, the Long Island Railroad, also known as LIRR, and specifically its Atlantic branch. And number two, the Grand Central Terminal Eastside Access Facility, also known as ESA. These two distributed antenna system deployments will together cost $100 million for Boingo to build out. In total, these projects comprise a significant amount of digital infrastructure that Boingo is deploying. Specifically, Boingo is building wireless connectivity through 18 miles of tunnels in New York City. The goal of this project is to provide wireless connectivity to passengers of New York's most trafficked public transportation systems and terminals, including both subways and rail systems. With that, let's jump into some of the specific details of these two important projects. The first project is known as the Long Island Railroad's Atlantic Branch. The Atlantic Branch project encompasses Long Island Railroad's Atlantic Terminal in Brooklyn, Jamaica Station in Queens, and the Atlantic Avenue Tunnel that connects the two locations. Importantly, Atlantic Terminal is Long Island Railroad's second largest terminal, after Penn Station. Additionally, Jamaica Station is one of the busiest transportation hubs in the country. It is a connection hub for the Long Island Railroad, subway, bus, and the air train to John F. Kennedy International Airport. This transportation infrastructure project started with improvements to Jamaica Station, which include the construction of a new Platform F, which was completed in March 2020. This new platform provides customers with frequent and direct service to Atlantic Terminal in Brooklyn. This allows for more regular train service between these two major stations and will make it easier to attend events at the Barclays Center. So that is the background on the transportation infrastructure. Now let's discuss the digital infrastructure component, which are distributed antenna systems that is being built by Boingo Wireless. As part of the Long Island Railroad's desire to improve its customer experience, one of its most important areas of focus has been on the customer's wireless connectivity. While Long Island Railroad customers already have connectivity to wireless services throughout most of the rail system, there is one significant exception. Currently, there is no wireless service available to customers or employees in the tunnels between Jamaica Station and Atlantic Terminal. 
Specifically, these are the tunnels located below Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn through which the trains pass. Additionally, wireless connectivity service in Jamaica Station and Atlantic Terminal is very often weak at best. To address this need and in turn allow customers and employees to have robust wireless communication in these locations, the MTA enlisted the help of Boingo Wireless. Specifically, Boingo is building distributed antenna systems and a dark fiber network to allow for Wi-Fi and cellular services. Boingo will act as what is known as a neutral host and will sub-license telecommunications capacity to the major wireless carriers like Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T. This ensures maximum coverage for the users of Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T's networks in these locations. In turn, this digital infrastructure allows customers and MTA employees to have voice and data reception throughout their travels between Jamaica Station and Atlantic Terminal. For Boingo, who is performing this build, the company receives a license agreement with the MTA to operate this network for a period of 10 years, with two consecutive five-year renewal options. This means that Boingo's contract can reach up to 20 years in duration, hence the long-term nature of digital infrastructure. So now let's move on to the second major infrastructure project in New York, which is known as the Grand Central Terminal East Side Access also known as ESA. The East Side Access Project provides new Long Island Railroad service to the east of Manhattan. Currently, it is one of the largest transportation infrastructure projects underway in the United States, costing over $11 billion and includes more than eight miles of tunneling. When it's completed, which is forecasted to be in December 2022, Eastside Access will serve 162,000 customers each day, providing a faster commute from Long Island and Queens to the east side of Manhattan. Customers will end their journey in a new eight-track terminal and concourse below Grand Central Terminal. So that is the background on the transportation infrastructure. Now let's discuss the digital infrastructure component, which are the distributed antenna systems being built by Boingo Wireless. Once again, Boingo is building distributed antenna systems and a dark fiber network to allow for Wi-Fi and cellular services. Customers will have voice and data reception throughout the Eastside Access facility while ensuring Long Island Railroad's business operations can utilize the wireless network as well. Specifically, this connectivity will be provided in the Eastside Access station, concourse, and tunnels in and out of Grand Central Terminal. Similarly, Boingo Wireless will again act as a neutral host and will sub-license telecommunications capacity to the major wireless carriers like Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T. For Boingo, who is performing this build, the company receives a license agreement with the MTA to operate this network for a period of 15 years, with two subsequent five-year renewal options. This means that Boingo's contract can reach up to 25 years in duration, showing again the long-term nature of digital infrastructure. With that, we hope you have a better understanding of how distributed antenna systems, or DAS, are being used to provide coverage and capacity to indoor environments, such as subway stations, tunnels, and railway stations. If you want to learn more about how distributed antenna systems actually function and how they are being deployed in cities and towns across the United States, then we highly recommend checking out our video called What are Small Cells and Distributed Antenna Systems? We will link to it in the description below. Also, check out our website at dgtlinfra.com to learn more about how Boingo Wireless is being taken private by digital infrastructure private equity firm Colony Capital for $854 million. We will link to two relevant articles in the description below as well. With that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.